Hello guys, have you ever heard about zero resistance of a material? Superconducting materials show zero resistance below certain temperatures. Today's video is on superconductivity and superconductor materials. A resistor is an electronic component that opposes the flow of electric current, it dissipates energy in the form of heat as current passes through it. Superconductivity is a fascinating phenomenon observed in certain materials at critical temperatures, where they exhibit zero electrical resistance and the expulsion of magnetic fields. This allows for the efficient transmission of electric current without any loss of energy due to resistance. In 1911, Kamerling Unz observed that below 4.15 K, the DC resistivity of the mercury dropped to zero, with this finding the field of superconductivity was born. Perfect superconductor materials exhibit characteristic properties, 1. Zero electrical resistance, and 2. Meissner effect, perfect diamagnetism. The absence of electrical resistivity is a well-known property of the superconducting state. At a characteristic temperature called the critical temperature, Tc, the resistance drops abruptly to an immeasurably small value and remains zero thereafter. The resistance of the materials drops abruptly to an immeasurably small value and remains zero below the critical temperature. A direct consequence of zero resistance is the existence of persistent currents. Currents induced in a superconducting ring have been observed by Collins, which persists for about two and a half years. Collins concluded that the upper limit of resistivity in the superconducting state was about 10 to the power minus 23 ohm per centimeter. Meissner effect, perfect diamagnetism, the magnetic properties of the superconducting state are as striking as the electrical ones. It is observed that a magnetic field is expelled from the interior of a field-cooled superconductor as soon as the superconducting state is reached. This behavior is called the Meissner effect. After the discovery of superconductivity with mercury, Hg, it was observed that many elements and alloys exhibited superconductivity. Till the years 1932, low-temperature superconductors, LTS, such as lead, tin, niobium, and other metals were found to be superconductors, and among them, niobium has the highest Tc of 9.2 K. In the following decades, many alloys and carbon and nitrogen-based compounds with superconductivity were discovered. Among these superconducting alloys and intermetallic compounds, NBT and Bisson reported in 1960s, are the most promising ones for practical applications, with a TC of 9.5 K and 18.1 K, respectively. In 1986, J. Bed and K. Muller discovered Labaco superconductors with a TC of 35 K, which opened the gate of searching for high-temperature superconductors, HTS. In 1987, the TC in this system rapidly increased above the liquid nitrogen temperature, 77 K, for the first time because of the discovery of UCO superconductors with TCS up to 93 K. Then bismuth-based cuprate superconductors, BISCO, including BI-2SR2 Kaku 208, BI-2212, and BI-2SR2 Ka2 Chu 3010, BI-2223 with TCS up to 110K were discovered. In 2001, the superconductivity at 39K in MGB2 was discovered by the Akamitsu Group at Aoyama Gakuin University. In 2008, the discovery of iron-based superconductors by the Tokyo Hosono Group marked the coming of the Iron Age of high TC superconductivity after Copper Age marked by cuprate superconductors. Very recently, Room temperature superconductivity, which had always been a dream of researchers over the past 100 years, was reported in a carbonaceous sulfur hydride, H2S. The carbonaceous sulfur hydride, CH8S, with a critical temperature of up to 287.7 K, 15 degrees Celsius, under extremely high pressure of 267 GPA was reported by the Snyder Group in 2020. 
the theory of superconductors. The properties of superconductors were modeled successfully by the efforts of John Bardeen, Leon Cooper, and Robert Schreffer in what is commonly called the BCS theory. A key conceptual element in this theory is the pairing of electrons close to the Fermi level into Cooper pairs through interaction with the crystal lattice. This pairing results from a slight attraction between the electrons related to lattice vibrations, phonon. The coupling to the lattice is called a phonon interaction. Pairs of electrons can behave very differently from single electrons, which are fermions and must obey the Pauli exclusion principle. The pairs of electrons act more like bosons, which can condense into the same energy level. The electron pairs have a slightly lower energy and leave an energy gap above them of the order of 0.001 eV which inhibits the kind of collision interactions, which lead to ordinary resistivity. This energy gap between the ground state and the excited states of the Cooper pairs prevents the scattering of electrons and contributes to the zero resistance behavior of superconductors. For critical temperatures such that the thermal energy is less than the band gap, the material exhibits zero resistivity. Application of superconductors Superconductors offer several advantages over conventional components, especially in certain specialized applications where their unique properties can be harnessed. 1. The Josephson effect is a quantum phenomenon observed in superconducting systems, specifically in Josephson junctions. The effect was predicted by the British physicist Brian Josephson in 1962. Josephson junctions involve the tunneling of Cooper pairs of electrons through a thin insulating barrier, or a weak link, between two superconducting materials. There are two main types of Josephson junctions, one, cis-junction, superconductor insulator superconductor, two, SNS junction, superconductor normal metal superconductor, Josephson junctions are a key component of superconducting quantum interference devices, SQUIDs. SQUIDs are extremely sensitive magnetometers that can detect tiny magnetic fields. Two, superconducting cables, superconducting wires are electrical wires made of superconductive material. When cooled below their transition temperatures, they have zero Superconducting cables can efficiently carry large amounts of electrical power over long distances and are often envisioned as a potential replacement for conventional high-voltage cables. 3. Magnetic Resonance Imaging MRI. Superconducting magnets are crucial components of MRI, providing strong and stable magnetic fields that enable detailed medical imaging without ionizing radiation. Here's how MRI scanning works a magnetization of nuclei. The human body contained water, and water contains H nuclei. In an MRI scan, the patient was exposed to a strong uniform magnet field. B. Alignment of nuclear spins. When exposed to a strong magnetic field, the H nuclei in the body align themselves with the direction of the magnetic field. This alignment of nuclear spins is crucial. C. Radio frequency, RF, pulse excitation, a short burst of radio frequency energy, known as an RF pulse, is applied to the body. This pulse is emitted by a coil within the MRI. D. Relaxation and signal emission. After the RF pulse is turned off, the hydrogen nuclei gradually return to their aligned state. As they do so, they emit radio frequency signals of their own. E. Image reconstruction, the signals received from the hydrogen nuclei are processed by a computer to create detailed cross-sectional images of the body. Four. 
magnetic levitation, maglev, transportation, maglev trains use superconducting magnets to achieve levitation and propulsion, reducing friction and allowing for high-speed, efficient transportation. Maglev, short for magnetic levitation, is a transportation technology that uses magnetic fields to suspend, guide, and propel vehicles without physical contact with a track. The maglev systems rely on magnetic forces to lift and move the vehicles above the track. The advantages are reduced friction, lower maintenance, and higher speeds compared to conventional systems. Five, cryogenics, superconducting materials often require extremely low temperatures to maintain their superconducting properties. This has led to advancements in cryogenics and AMP, refrigeration technology. Industrial uses. Helium cooling has been implemented in a variety of industrial applications to improve efficiency and safety. Cryogenic technology has been employed in spacecraft and AMP, satellites to enable efficient operation. These fuels provide higher specific impulses than chemical fuels, enabling extended mission durations. Hope you have understood the basic idea of superconductivity. Follow for more interesting science and technology videos. Comments will be appreciated.